Hello friends, my name is Mohammed Imran. I am a second year MBA student. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the purine synthesis. This topic is very important as well as little bit complex. So I would recommend you to watch this video from start to end for better understanding. Let's start with the basics. Like nucleoside, nucleoside is nitrogenous base plus pentose. Nucleotide is nitrogenous base plus pentose plus phosphate. Purines like adenine and guanine, pyrimidines, cytosine, thymine and uracil. In this video, we are going to study about the purine biosynthesis. Now coming to the main topic that is the compound that contribute to the purine ring of nucleotide. As we can see in this image that N1 is from amino group of aspartate. As we can see here aspartate amine N1 and C2 and C8 is from N10 formyl THF. THF means tetrahydrofolate. As we can clearly see in this image that C2 and C8 is from N10 formyl THF. N3 and N9 is from glutamine amide and C4, C5, N7 is from glycine. It is marked in red color in this image and C6 is from CO2. Now let's study the biosynthesis of purine nucleotide. This topic is little bit tough, difficult to memorize and lengthy. So I have split this biosynthesis in four slides which makes it very easy to remember. The two points that you should always remember is alpha D ribose phosphate. This is from where this cycle would start, this synthesis would start and uh, the product that is formed is inosine monophosphate. This alpha D ribose phosphate is derived from hexose monophosphate shunt. So the hexose monophosphate shunt would give us the alpha D ribose 5 ribose phosphate and which would get converted into PRPP. The first step PRPP would be formed in presence of enzyme PRPP synthetase and ATP would get converted into AMP. So two phosphate would be there in the product that is 5-phosphoribosyl and alpha pyrophosphate we can see two phosphates in the product and the product that is formed is prpp here in the first step this prpp would get converted into beta 5 phosphoribosyl amide in presence of enzyme prpp glutamine amidotransferase and glutamine so glutamine would give us n3 and n9 to the purine ring of nucleotides now this beta 5 phosphoribosyl amine in presence of enzyme synthetase, if you are not able to recall enzymes in the exam, I would recommend you to write synthetase in that step in presence of glycine. So the glycine would give us C4, C5 and N7 to the purine ring of nucleotide and the product that is formed is glycine amide ribosyl 5 phosphate. You can remember this by GAR. We can, you can see that G. A and R ribosyl 5 phosphate here is written as R G A R would be formed and in presence of enzyme formyl transferase and N10 formyl THF this N10 formyl THF would give us C2 and C8 to the purine ring of nucleotide and the product that is formed is N formyl glycinamide ribosyl 5 phosphate that is F G A R formyl here is F G A and R the first product is GAR, then FGAR would be formed and this FGAR that is n formyl glycinamide ribosulfide phosphate would get converted into glycinamidine. The only change the here is glycinamidine in presence of enzyme synthetase and glutamine. The glutamine would give us N3 and N9 to the purine ring of nucleotide and the product that is formed is n formyl glycinamidine ribosyl 5 phosphate so FGAM would be formed so in the second slide you have to remember GAR FGAR and FGA or you can remember this by GA and FGA as R that is ribosyl 5 phosphate would be common till the last step so in the second slide GA FGA and FGAM now coming to the third slide that is FGAM that is N for mild glycinamidine ribosyl 5 phosphate would get converted into 5 amino imidazole ribosyl 5 phosphate in presence of synthetase and ATP. So the product that is formed is 5 amino imidazole ribosyl 5 phosphate. So we can remember this by AI amino imidazole. And the next step is carboxylation. So CO2 would be there. The CO2 would give us the C6 to the purine ring in presence of enzyme carboxylase. We have to only add carboxylate after 5 amino imidazole so we can remember this by AIC A for amino I for imidazole and C for carboxylate and ribosyl 5 phosphate would be common so in the third slide you have to remember AI and AIC now coming to the last slide AIC that is 5 amino imidazole carboxylate R 5P ribosyl 5 phosphate this would get converted into 
फाइव अमाइनो इमिडेजोल फोर सक्सिनल कार्बोक्सामाइड आर फाइव पीज राइबोसिल फाइव फॉस्फेट इन प्रेजेंस ऑफ सिंथेटिस एंड एसपार्टेट एसपार्टेट वुड गिव अस एन वन टू द प्योर इन रिंग ऑफ न्यूक्लियोटाइड सो वी कैन रिमेम्बर दिस बाई ए आई एस सी ए फॉर अमाइनो आई फॉर इमिडेजोल एस फॉर सक्सिनल एंड सी फॉर कार्बोक्सामाइड दिस वुड गेट कन्वर्टेड इन टू ए आई सी सो द प्रोडक्ट दैट इज फॉर्म दिस फाइव अमाइनो इमिडेजोल फोर कार्बोक्सामाइड आर फाइव पी Ribosyl 5-phosphate. This is common till the last step. In presence of adeno succinate lyase and fumarate would say bye bye. And this step would get converted into five form amino imidazole for carboxamide R5P. Only we have to add F A I C form amino imidazole C for carboxamide. In presence of N10 for mild THF, which would get converted into THF and Enzyme is formyl transferase. You have to keep a note on this step. So N10 formyl THF would give us C2 and C8 to the purine ring of nucleotides. This FAIC would get converted into the product that is that we want, that is inosine monophosphate, in presence of enzyme cyclohydrolase. So in the last slide, fourth slide, you have to remember AISC. Which would get converted into AIC, which would further get converted into FAIC, and the last product that is inosine monophosphate. Let's revise this once again. So in the first step, you have to remember alpha deribose phosphate derived from hexose monophosphate shunt, and the first product that is formed is PRPP, which would get converted into beta five phosphoribosyl amine. And the second slide, you have to remember GA, FGA, and FGAM. In the third step, that is third slide, you have to remember AI and AIC, and in the fourth slide, you have to remember AISC, AIC, FAIC, and the last product that is formed is inosine monophosphate in presence of enzyme cyclohydrolase. Now coming to the inhibitors of purine synthesis by sulfonamides. You have to remember sulfonamides. I have marked some steps and have told you to note these steps. Because sulfonamides are structural analogs of PABA, para amino benzoic acid, which inhibits the synthesis of folic acid in microorganism. So, the steps that are marked as star and I consist of enzyme formyl transferase. So, this sulfonamide would inhibit that enzyme, that is formyl transferase. The structural analog of folic acid is methotrexate. Methotrexate would also inhibit the steps that are marked as star and I. Which consists of enzyme formyl transferase. Now coming to the synthesis of AMP and GMP from IMP. So we have formed inosine monophosphate till now. This inosine monophosphate would get converted into AMP and GMP by following steps. And first, let's study the AMP formation. IMP inosine monophosphate. Would get converted into adenyl succinate in presence of adenyl succinate synthetase enzyme. And aspartate and GDP, which which would get converted to GDP plus inorganic phosphate. So IMP, the first product that is formed is adenylate succinate, which would get converted into adenosine monophosphate, and the fumarate would say bye bye. And now coming to the formation of GMP, this one is little bit difficult. So this IMP in presence of IMP dehydrogenase and NAD plus, which would get converted into NADH plus H plus, would form xanthosine monophosphate. That is ZMP. XMP, sorry, XMP. This XMP would get converted into guanosine monophosphate. That is GMP in presence of GMP synthetase. As I have already told you, if you are not able to recall the enzyme, just write synthetase in that place. In presence of glutamine, which would get converted into glutamate and ADP. Now coming to the last one, that is conversion of nucleoside monophosphate to diphosphate and triphosphate. Till now we have formed AMP and GMP. Now we have to form ATP and GTP. This is formed by nucleoside monophosphate AMP GMP in presence of NMP kinase. NMP means nucleoside monophosphate. In presence of ATP, it would get converted into nucleoside diphosphate. This nucleoside diphosphate again in presence of ATP, which would give one more phosphate, 
and enzyme that is used is NDP kinase nucleoside diphosphate NMP and NDP NMP means nucleoside monophosphate kinase NDP kinase is nucleoside diphosphate kinase we would get the desired product that is nucleoside triphosphate ATP and GTP so finally our product is formed that is nucleoside triphosphate I hope so you like this discussion on purine synthesis thank you for watching hope you like this video make sure you hit the like and subscribe button for more videos related to medical field